Hello everybody. Hey, have you ever wondered how an instrument rated pilot can ascertain the specific departure information for a particular airport? Yeah, if you're thinking about that, that is important information. Welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy and our instrument rating course. My name is Mike Thompson and I want to remind you to be successful in the course you must, number one, study the online course and the associated material. Number two, look at these videos. Number three, review all of this content with your flight instructor. So how do we obtain some of this departure information? Well, first of all, how do we know if departure procedures are standard or non-standard? Well, I want you to start by looking at this approach plate. And on the approach plate, you can see if you look closely in the upper left hand corner, this black uh, uh, triangle with the letter T in it. Now, that is an indicator for non standard departure information. And where do we find it? Well, where we find it is in what pilots call the TERPS. Now, we call it the TERPS for short, but what it really is is the TPP, or the Terminal Procedures Publication. Now, in that Terminal Procedures Publication, or the TERPS, I'm going to turn to the Table of Contents. And when I go to the Table of Contents, I'm going to be able to find quickly the information I need to get to. Now, when I see that uh, black triangle with the T in it that indicates non-standard departure info, it's telling me that one of five conditions exists for that airport. One or more of five conditions may exist for that airport, and here they are. They may be obstacle notes, non-standard minimums, diverse vector areas, a VOCA, that's a VOCA, -O -A, which is a visual climb over the airport, or finally an ODP, which is an obstacle departure procedure. So let's take a look at the New Smyrna Beach Airport. If I look into the TERPS for the state of Florida and I find KEVB, and for example, I might look at the RNAV 29 approach and lo and behold, there is this black triangle with the T. Now, if I go into the TERPS, I'm going to look up New Smyrna Beach and that black triangle with the T is going to call my attention to what we call obstacle notes. These describe low and close in obstacles. These obstacles may be less than 200 feet above the DER or departure end of the runway and within a mile. These obstacles may technically penetrate that OIS surface that we talked about in a previous video, but they don't require increased takeoff minimums. Pilots should be cautious of late takeoff rotations or other factors that are mentioned here in these notes. Now, let's take a look at Another example airport, not far from New Smyrna, this is the Ormond Beach Airport, O or K-O-M-N. Now, the K-O-M-N or Ormond Beach Airport has what we call non-standard takeoff minimums. And if you look at our example here, we see these non-standard minimums for runway nine. This means that the pilot must assure that they can meet the new departure criteria to ensure a safe departure. Now, when we talk about uh, determining whether or not we can uh, make this safe departure, there are two critical factors we need to take a little bit of time and study in more depth. Number one is my feet per minute climb rate. 
This describes how quickly altitude is gained. And number two, feet per nautical mile, my climb gradient. This describes the amount of distance required to achieve a specific altitude. Now, as pilots, of course, we are going to be thoroughly um, uh, pre-briefed and pre-planned for this airport, and we're going to go into our POH or PIM and determine our climb rate in feet per minute for that aircraft and these conditions, and your flight instructor will go through those performance charts with you. We are then going to compare that to the feet per nautical mile and see if we can meet these new departure criteria. Well, why the big difference between rate of climb and feet per nautical mile? Well, here's the explanation, folks. Take these two aircraft here with the same rate of climb. Let's say I've got my, my slow moving high drag bi-wing airplane climbing out of New Smyrna Beach at 500 feet per minute. And I've got this high-speed twin-engine jet also climbing out at 500 feet per minute, but notice the jet covers a lot more ground because it's traveling so much faster. Now, as you might imagine, if you take a look at our next slide here, that could pose some problems. I don't want my high-speed two-engine jet flying right through that tower. So, even though both aircraft are using the same rate of climb, they demonstrate radically different obstacle clearance capabilities. The faster the aircraft, the faster the rate of climb needs to be. So because of this, climb minimums are expressed in feet per nautical mile, so that all aircraft fly the same minimum climb angle. So take a look at our third diagram here, and we see that our high drag slow speed bi-wing airplane at 90 knots is on that climb gradient at 500 and 10 feet per minute. My slightly faster uh, turboprop twin that climbs out at 150 knots needs at least an 850 foot per minute climb rate. And back to my high speed twin engine jet climbing out at 250 knots, that airplane's going to need over 1400 feet per minute to maintain that climb gradient. It is the pilot's responsibility to determine if they are capable of meeting that required climb gradient. Well, where am I going to find that information? We are going to go to the TPP, or what pilots call TERPS for short, and you're going to notice that the back cover or last page of the TPP contains climb and descent tables that make this conversion very easy. Here's a graphic of what the last page of that TERPS looks like. Now, what I'd like to do is take an example, and let's say our procedure requires 270 foot per nautical mile climb gradient, and we plan to climb at 90 knots. Now, important distinction here, and review this with your instructor. This is a 90 knots over the ground, so this is a 90 knot ground speed. So if I have to complete, if I have to achieve 270 feet per nautical mile with a 90 knot ground speed, what minimum rate of climb will I require? Well, take a look. It's pretty simple. Across the top, I find my speed, that's 90, and I come down to what the departure requires in this case. Remember, it's a non-standard departure, and it says it needs 270 feet per nautical mile. You see the red circle at the intersection? My aircraft needs to climb at at least 410 feet per minute. Now, 
in a 172, well, usually that's possible. In the cool winter months with low density altitude, I should be able to easily achieve that. In the heat of the afternoon on a hot August day in South Florida, mm, I might be cutting it close. So you can see where it's up to the pilot to calculate the performance and compare that to the required climb gradient. So taking that information and now coming back to our Ormond Beach example, it tells us in our example that we have to climb at a minimum of 239 feet per nautical mile. So I want you to practice interpreting this and using that chart in the back of the TERPS with your flight instructor. Now, what about diverse vector areas? Now, here's an example from Panama City, Florida. And diverse vector areas are not procedures per se, but rather they provide assurance that vectors provided by ATC are safe for departing aircraft who may still be below the MVA or minimum vectoring altitude. Pilots following a DVA are still responsible for adhering to the 35-200-400 rule. Now, you recall the 35-200-400 from a previous video, and what that is referring to is reaching 35 feet AGL by the departure end of the runway and achieving a 200 foot per nautical mile climb gradient and not making any turns until reaching 400 feet above the DER. And that's what we mean when we talk about the 35, 200, 400 rule. And finally, folks, let's take a look at the VOCA. The VOCA means a visual climb over the airport, or a VCOA. The VCOA is an option at some airports, not all airports, at some airports where obstacles more than three statute miles away require a greater than 200 foot per nautical mile climb gradient. Now, the pilot may request a VOCA when obtaining an IFR clearance. If you don't think you can maintain that climb gradient, you can request in your flight plan to circle around the airport until you get up to a vectoring altitude or a safe altitude at which you could depart the airport area and head off into the en route portion of your flight plan. An example of this is shown at the Ponce Airport in Puerto Rico. Well, folks, that just about wraps up obtaining departure information. Join us next time.